<laughs> Item 5 on the order paper is the adjournment. And before the debate commences, I would like to inform the House that the Minister wrote to me this afternoon to indicate that he was unavailable to respond to the adjournment debate today, as he is unable to accommodate the later start. I have responded to the Minister, reminding him of my expectation that the Minister should endeavour to attend the House whenever possible, and to inform the Business Committee at the earliest op opportunity should they find themselves unavailable. So, returning to the debate, the proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and all other speakers will have approximately seven minutes. And I call Mr. Chris Hazard. Can I thank uh, the Business Committee for tabling this? Uh, for allowing this uh, this evening. Um, I suppose in the dark autumn nights, uh, thinking of beaches is a long way uh, from most of our minds. Um, but what we're going to discuss here tonight is very, very important, not just for the tourism and leisure activities of the South Down area, but for the environmental reasons, for wildlife, for economic growth and prosperity in the area. Um, so I do want to thank those MLAs, constituency colleagues and others uh, who have stayed um, behind. I want to place special thanks on record to local campaigners who over a, a number of months now have been quite vociferous uh, in their demands that, that government isn't doing enough. Um, we, we have an empty chair tonight where a minister should have been sitting. Um, and I think local people will be disappointed that the Department for the Environment and the Minister for the Environment is not here to, to listen to some of these points uh, and to shield. Again, I think they'll be doubly disappointed given that we, we may have been able, to, if the Minister for the Environment wasn't here, to perhaps have the minister uh, for regional development. A lot of this, these issues we're going to talk about tonight is relating to DRD, but of course uh, political games means we, we're left with no minister for regional development uh, as well. Uh, so again, it's local people, it's local communities who are coming to the fore to tackle long-standing neglect. Uh, and again, it's disappointing, and I just want to place on record uh, the disappointment here. Um, members, again, walking around this building uh, will have seen various references to the Great War of 1914 to 18, and of course the Second World War. Um, and many people may not be aware that the British military dumped vast quantities of armaments and munitions into the Irish Sea following these wars. In 1945 alone, more than a million tonnes of munitions were dumped into Buford's Dyke, uh, a long trough in the, in the Irish seabed. Included in this dump was mortars, grenades, rockets, cluster bombs, anti-aircraft shells, mustard gas, sarin gas, and more than 15,000 phosgen chemical warheads. In the 1950s and the 1960s, radioactive munitions were dumped again as each Cold War modification of weaponry deemed various types of bombs obsolete. Stormont's environment ministers and department at the time simply turned their back on the potential impact of such actions. It was a case of out of sight and out of mind. Now we have more than 50 incidents of these dangerous munitions washing ashore in South Down in the last five years alone. It's quite simple, and the local community are saying it's quite simple. We can no longer tolerate the lazy, fair approach of the Department of the Environment um, to these incidents. We cannot be out of sight, out of mind. Uh, the beaches and the issues relating to the beaches and the munitions is just one, but it needs to be brought to the fore. Another issue, of course, is litter. A recent marine litter survey indicated that it is a, is a real severe issue still in South Down. Uh, we have a case in Ballyhornan, a beach owned by the Department of the Environment, the NIEA controlled Ballyhornan Beach. There is twice as much litter in Ballyhornan Beach than in all the beaches in the North Antrim coast combined. This is simply unacceptable. For a beach that is controlled by the Department of the Environment, it is absolutely unacceptable that this is the case. We have various strategies put in place by the Department in recent years. Some of them, such as the fishing for litter, have had limited success. Um, we know that uh, there are issues with the fishing industry and some of the beaches adjacent to some of our harbours um, have the highest amount of litter. But we need to see more. We've only had limited success. Again, the good beach summits you know, for Torella, for Cranfield, for Murloc, um, you know, you know, Newcastle Beach, these are the beaches that seem to feature. There's 13 beaches along Lake Hale, and I'll, I'll focus on Lake Hale, mostly myself tonight. My, my colleague, Katrina Ram, will talk about some of the other areas. There's 13 beaches along Lake Hale. These are the beaches that we need to be concentrating on. The, the potential for growth and for tourism on these beaches and for the protection of our environment is huge, but it's simply not getting the attention that it deserves um, for government. I think there's a phrase that, that best sums up the approach, and it's simply a poverty of aspiration. Uh, and you know, nowhere is this more keenly felt and then the lack of EU bathing status um, for a number of these beaches. 
um, and I think that you know that is severely disappointing. You know, the, the people of Lakeel and the wider South Down constituency believe they are being treated as second-class citizens. You know, quite simply, and I, and I agree with them, it's, it's intolerable that every single beach in North Down and every single beach in North Antrim was simply gifted the status of EU bathing status. They didn't have to apply. The, the department did that for them. They didn't have to reach any sort of standard of bathing water. They were simply gifted this status. And as I'll come on to later on, the, none of these beaches actually have bathing management plans in place either. Yet the local community in Lakeel, in places like Ballyhornan and Kalok and Ardlass and Caliph, have to jump through hoops um, to, 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 to gain this sort of uh, recognition. Uh, again, I think this is a direct result of you know, decades of neglect and mismanagement. Um, and directly feeding into this, of course, it's a long tradition from M NI Water pumping grade, level, grade two level sewage into the water on all of these. You know, if we take Coney Island, Coney Island is very popular with local surfers, yet we pump sewage into the water. If we take Ballyhornan, an area of scientific um, interest, special flora and fauna, we pump sewage into the water. If we take Dundrum Bay, you know, the potential, and, and there's various business interests in the developing oysters and, and, and mussels, we pump sewage into the water. You know, if we look at our glass, we have a very active fishing harbour um, with the great potential again for tourism, but again, the amount of pollution and, and uh, industrial waste that's washed on to the East Ardlass uh, Beach is just not acceptable, and we need to do something about it. And even if you look at Minerstown, and, and Minerstown, Minerstown is a very significant beach in that, you know, the ecological value of Minerstown, uh, we have a seal colony um, who, you know, come ashore there to give birth. And, but the, again, the council have been looking at the water, and the water is not coming up to scratch. So we have to ask, you know, the reasons why this is allowed to be the case. So for various reasons, EU bathing status is going to be the catalyst for growth in all of this. If we, if we can get EU bathing status, NI water simply will not be allowed to pump the sewage into the water. That means we're going to see an upgrade uh, in the sewage infrastructure. You know, for areas such as Dunsford and Kalock and uh, Ballyhornan, who have not been able to get housing developments passed or any sort of industrial growth because of the poor sewage infrastructure, this can be a real catalyst. So it's not just for the beach, it's for, it's for the wider area. And again, because we've had the neglect from central government, the community have had to take the lead in this regard, and the community have been brilliant, and I, and I pay great tribute to the community. The last couple of years, they have organised mass swims on these beaches to, to highlight that these beaches actually are being used uh, in Ballyhorn and Caliph and Kalok. Um, you know, hundreds of people have po uh, participated, and the positive media coverage you know, has went all around the world, and it's actually tied into another local Lakeel campaign about saving the heritage of our lighthouse. Uh, and again, there's a very vibrant community that wants to step into the area that government is not doing and, and to take control. And I think, you know, in an era of co-design and wanting to work with uh, various agencies, this is great potential to let local communities who have a real interest in conservation and environmental um, protections for our local area, you know, to play a key role. Um, you know, the infrastructure is largely there. EU bathing status, you know, there's no serious resource implications. Uh, it's a matter of new signage to, about bathing water. Um, obligations are fairly light touch. You know, unlike our, our blue flag beaches, um, you know, there is no um, demand that you would have to have lifeguards, etc. Um, for those who maybe aren't aware of EU bathing water designation, um, it simply acknowledges that waters where people are bathing require more monitoring and clear reporting to the public. The Marine Policy Division of DOE manages the whole process here in the north. The designation, as I alluded to earlier, first appeared in 2011 when 23 beaches were identified by NEA and automatically designated. All of the North Down Coast beaches were designated, as were all of the North Antrim Coast beaches. The bathing waters once designated have underwent a rigorous water monitoring regime ever since, and again it actually tightened up in 2015. The people of Lakeel and the wider South Down area deserve something similar. Designations, though, for EU status, and I think this is, again highlights the urgency of the situation, only happen every six years. So given that the last designation was in the end of 2011, the next designation process will be at the end of 2017 bathing season, and it takes two full years to undergo the monitoring process as a candidate beach 
Therefore, the application must be submitted by the end of 2015 to meet the deadline for the next process. It, you know, this highlights the urgency when it comes to this. We have to see action from the Department. The Department, in, in partnership with local council, are going to be the people who facilitate this. And I, I'm delighted to see the Chair of the Environment Committee is here. Um, perhaps this is a vehicle the local community may be able to use to ensure that something as important as this you know, get, gets the attention it deserves. Uh, the North Down and Ard beaches were put forward by designation, as I said. The Council did not have to be proactive whatsoever. There were no management plans created, uh, and, and again, in most cases, there still remains no active management plans whatsoever today. Um, not a single beach that has, was designated in 2011 has a comprehensive management plan today. Yet these are the sort of challenges that local communities in Clock, uh, are in Clock and Ballyhorn um, are being put forward. Uh, as I have said, it is the local community that has come forward, uh, and I am delighted that my Sinn Féin colleagues in Newry Moore and Down Council took on board some of these demands uh, and were successful in a motion in creating a local beaches forum, a, a beaches forum that can be a real driver now in not only securing the EU bathing status, but, and, th and this is one of the links, I suppose, we have the potential for the Mourne coastal path, and this is taps into tourism. Well, there is no better body now to drive forward in tandem with the local community than this beaches forum when it comes to the coastal path. When it comes to the, the, the issue of litter, you know, very often this has been left to the local community, who do a massive amount of litter picks in all of these beaches. But now we have the statutory footing with this beaches forum that perhaps can take this on. Another exciting uh, venture, I think, is the EU's Coast Watch. Uh, whenever the local community get involved and look after their own particular stretch a few hundred metres of the coast. You know, when you think of the potential of local schools, local organisations, you know, and the need for a healthy and active uh, local communities, I think this is a no-brainer. Um, so you know, for me, this Beaches Forum has the potential in, in that fourfold way um, in driving this forward. Um, because e EU bathing status really, as I've said, is, is the catalyst for all the improvements. Um, you know, if we look at the sewers, as I've said, not just for the industries and for the big housing developments, but for the local small housing developments. We all know the, the, the issues with Ballyhornan, uh, the former military camp, and the sewage issues that, that arise there. You know, where else? And I was, uh, we were with uh, a number of uh, school children yesterday from Southdown, and we were talking about this debate here tonight. And they wanted to know what it was about, so we explained about the pumping of sewage into the sea. And the kids, as most obviously it can be at times, just says, well, why don't they just stop? And it's a very simplified approach, but it's right. It simply should not be allowed. When we look at a beach like Ballyhornan, it just beggars belief that a beach controlled by the department that's designated as ASSI um, for the flora and fauna and else, that we allow and we tolerate sewage being pumped into the sea. Now, we, I think the department simply slap a fine on NI Water. And I see the previous minister here. Uh, he can let us know if it's any different, but as far as I'm aware, they simply slap a fine on the NI water, and, and that's that will do. It's simply not un, it's unacceptable, and it has to change. Um, as I've mentioned, the active communities, we're dealing here with communities that very often do not have the best sports facilities, that you know, are very often you know, really looking for improvement in facilities. Here are some fantastic beaches they can get involved in. Here are some fantastic local ventures they get involved in. Um, the tourism here is one of the big things. Tourism is going to be the real driver of change for the South Down and the Kiel area going forward. But without giving it the building blocks such as this, we are simply operating with hands behind our backs. You know, how are we going to attract tourists to come to absolutely stunning places? Like Ballyhornan is a stunning place. The potential in places like Ballyhornan, Caliph, Kalok, and you're saying, come along here, but when you get into the water, you might have to, to watch out for the sanitary waste. The sanitary tiles that are in the water. It's simply not acceptable. We shouldn't be doing it. If it's, good, if, it, if it's good enough for people in North Down not to have to do that, then it should be good enough for the people of South Down as well. And for local business and for everybody else, the importance of this, I think, cannot be understated. For far too long, we've had to deal with out of sight, out of mind when it comes to the beaches in South Down, particularly in La Cale. Uh, I think it's time now. It's great to see the local council, as I say, we're able to vote through a beaches forum. I think now what we have to see from the, the, from the department and from the minister is a dedication to make sure that the EU bathing status for the N3 beaches of 
Kalok, Khalif and Ballyhornan is secured by the end of this year. That process of applying begins by the end of this year. Um, because if we have to wait another six years, I don't think local people will forgive us. Um, so again, I thank you all for, for coming here tonight and participating in this debate. And I pay tribute again to the local campaigners who tirelessly go out and campaign on this issue. And I'm very, very proud to play a part in that. Gormio And I call Ms Anna Lowe, the chairperson of the Committee of the Environment. Mr. Speaker, I'm not speaking as a chairperson of the Environment Committee, though. Would you allow me to go ahead? No. <laughs> yeah. I call Mr. Sean Rogers. Speaker, and I'm welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion and to thank the member for bringing it to the Assembly today. South Down is widely known as having some of the best beaches in Ireland. The outstanding beauty and excellence of our beaches is internationally recognised. The Blue Flag Award, for example, is a voluntary eco-label award to over 4,000 beaches or marinas in 49 countries and seeking sustainable development of these beaches and marinas. In 2015, the Blue Flag was awarded to 12 beaches in Northern Ireland. Four of these are in County Down at Crawfordsburn, Torella, Murloc and Cranfield. Similar successes for Down beaches were replicated with the Northern Ireland Seaside Award, in which three out of the six resort beaches were located in Down, in Crawfordsburn, Torella and Cranfield, whereas Morlock was awarded as a rural beach. Last month, the Department for Environment released the Better Beaches report, which revealed that all 23 of Northern Ireland's bathing beaches have passed new, stricter European standards. Of these 23 beaches, 14 were classed as excellent, seven were classed as good and two sufficient which meant that none of the basing beaches in Northern Ireland were classed as poor. Northern Ireland is now home to some of the best bathing beaches in Europe, a fact that is clearly reflected in Down, as four of the excellent beaches are at Crawfordsburn, Torella, Morlock and Cranfield. Beaches represent a vital part of the Downs tourism in Conway, and all of these, pl these places are placed highly in, the, in, the, in top places to visit Northern Ireland. The maintenance of high standards found within Down beaches is crucial, in maintaining and expanding our, our water-based tourist and leisure industry. Unfortunately, the Minister of Environment cannot be here tonight because of a prior engagement, but he has indicated that he remains fully committed to the ongoing development of our, of our beaches, and I believe Down's record of excellence will continue. And as Mr Hazard said, you know, we have such potential in our tourism, but as how do we, how do we de de develop that tourist potential? And in highlighting the positives, as I've done we also have to think of the negative, because we have to really, have to really raise the bar here. And I concur with the members' st st sentiments that all beaches in Down should be striving for better levels of cleanliness, as should all beaches in Northern Ireland. But I don't agree that nothing has been done. We have seen clear progress has been made on the poor beaches, and it appears that through better beach framework that we, we, can, we can get even better. I would acknowledge the work of Northern Iron Water in terms of particularly at Ballymartin with a new treatment work that has improved the water quality there. But then and on along we have problems, um, a bit like what Mr Hazard mentioned, of, of all kinds of things going into the sea and ha have people not been able to, able to swim there. I don't want to dismiss any of the concerns of the state of our beaches or dismiss the impact of littering, but it's worth noting that Northern Iron beaches have all met stricter standards for water quality. And I think also we have, we have to look at, particularly in places like Cranfield, we have to look at, at looking after the tourists, but we have to look, at, look after residents as well in terms of the management of our beaches and the management of car parking and so on. Mr Hazard did refer to littering, and it, it's a blight in, in the natural beauty of any environment. And a key aim for all beaches should be cleanliness. The Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful Marine Survey and Litter is alarming for certain parts of our coastline. Bally Hornin, as he mentioned, is a clear cause for concern as the litter and waste at beaches near fishing harbours such as Ardlass and Kilkeel. The survey noted litter dumps near some of our, our leading beaches as well, which makes clear the clear threat that the waste may have on our beach health and industries. I believe that it is vital that the programmes such as Little Less, Bag It and Bin It and Live Here, Love Here are supported so we can claim, reclaim these areas from the dumps. Counterpoint there, for example, while the extent of ru rubbish can be al alarming, I note that the Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful Survey did note that the winter storms were partially to blame for dumping large quantities of litter on our shores. In a recent beach survey, exactly, there was a French road sign 
was found, was found along the beach, indicating that a significant amount of the litter exists that comes from, comes from the seas and from Britain and further afield. It is found that litter deposits are extracted and reduced in the marine environment. It is unfortunate that rubbish deposits exist over the seas and may require new emphasis on joint approaches to rubbish disposal across these islands and Europe. The good thing about today's debate is it's about, it's about bring it, bringing, bringing this to, to, to the awareness of the public and certainly that more needs to be done. But I believe that for real change to occur, we must reiterate the importance of our collective responsibility to look after our beaches. Community engagement and greater education are crucial to raise awareness on the, on the damage that littering has, can cause. At this time, I would like to commend the many schools that get involved and local community groups that get involved in beach cleanups. Both locals and visitors alike have a duty to respect our beaches and to, to responsibly dispose of rubbish in an ethical manner. I commend the progress so far that the Environment Minister has achieved, but I believe community and environmental organisations such as Beach NI, Keep Northern Ireland Tidy and Beautiful, remain vital in helping to guide the population in accepting and challenging this approach. And Mr Speaker, above all I say, improving our beaches is every one of our responsibilities. Thank you. Mr. John McAllister. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I congratulate Mr. Hazard on, on securing uh, this evening's debate on this. I mean, there are several issues, I suppose, that that, uh, that have been flagged up with uh, all of this. Is one we need to do significantly better as a, as a collective, not only on uh, the the big the big waste and the big sewage problems from Northern Ireland Water that they are the lead agency in dealing with, but also in educating people um, about when they access the beach and other beauty spots about taking their waste home with them. That is a huge issue. I think from uh, colleagues across, and Ms Lowe will probably know this from uh, overall in litter across Northern Ireland, we spend something like £30 million per year in dealing with it and clearing up uh, uh, you know, other people's waste effectively, which is something uh, I think is a huge cost to the, ta to the taxpayer and the public purse in dealing with that. So it is, as Mr Rogers rightly pointed out, it is all of our business as to how we, we deal uh, with this. Mr Hazard, in, in opening the debate, uh, mentioned, I think, uh, almost every beach in in South Down. We are blessed uh, in the constituency of South Down. Uh, having lived there all my life and born and bred in the constituency, um, I can certainly say with um, um, a completely unbiased view, it is the most beautiful constituency in the United Kingdom. Um, and we have everything. We have the mountains and we have the coastline, right from Carlingford Lock to Strangford Lock um, and many uh, superb beaches in between, and there is an absolute uh, tragedy that so many of them are, are not uh, in the condition that we want them to be in, and whether it's in, in and we have to remind ourselves uh, that many of these beaches fall into uh, areas of outstanding natural beauty, and when it goes even higher into um, the ASSIs. And, and we have to ask then what is being done. And I would, uh, it is a great shame that the Minister isn't here to respond to the debate. But I mean, we have to, to look at what has been done if we are serious about developing a, a tourism product, about caring for our environment the way we want it to be cared for, the way it deserves to be cared for. Um, if we are serious about all of those uh, aspirations, we have to, one, really up our game uh, in doing it, in developing a tourism product where we have the mountains, where we have made huge and significant investments in developing, whether well, it's mountain bike trails, in giving and creating a product to bring people down. Northern Ireland, uh, across the board, lags way behind other parts of the UK and Ireland in the overnight stays um, of visitors to outside Belfast, in the spend. Uh, outside Belfast, and yet it is hailed as one of the key drivers um, of our economy and revitalising it. Um, from the environmental perspective, the last thing anyone wants is our environment being constantly damaged 
uh, not only the environment being constantly damaged, but potential public health risks as well um, when we access. And we want our beaches to be very accessible. We want them to be where people can go and enjoy at all times of the year, at all times of the year, to get out and enjoy the great outdoors uh, and make sure that they are uh, in a safe way. So it is about keeping pressure on the department and on agencies and on um, Northern Ireland Water to make sure that that collective approach is taken, that agencies that are directly responsible for improving uh, the, our water quality are held to account and actually made to, to live up to the standards that we actually expect and want to see set uh, for our beaches. So it is positive at least that it's being debated and I hope uh, that we don't have to keep returning to this, Mr Speaker, in an effort to make sure that something is done about it because I think we, uh, not only the, the people who live in South Down, um, want to see that greatly improved, but the people we would want to come and visit, the tourists, um, the, to come and enjoy the scenery uh, and what we have to offer. Uh, I think we want it in a fit state for all people to enjoy, and that there are no public health issues, no environmental damage. Um, I would join with Mr Rogers and pay tribute to uh, probably the thousands of people who volunteer every year. And I'm sure I, like my colleagues, have been out on various beach cleans in various parts of the constituency. I want to pay tribute to people, and many of them um, sometimes travel down to do it. I know from one school in, in Belfast that does an annual trip to South Down uh, for a beach clean as part of their, their Duke of Edinburgh award and, and putting something back in uh, when they've been to the constituency and, and enjoyed uh, outdoor pursuits um, and all their activities. They're giving something back. So I want to pay tribute to the thousands of volunteers that do give up time to go out and, and uh, lift, lift rubbish of everyday things. And it's the one... The, the, the one thing that always strikes me any time I've been on a beach clean is actually when you start to walk down a beach and lift stuff is just how much stuff there is to be lifted. You know, it never fails to surprise you how quickly a bag uh, can be filled. So it is an important issue to bring to this House. Uh, regrettably, the Minister is unable to respond, but I do hope, Mr Speaker, that he reads the Hansard and his officials go through it and provide... Um, some reassurance to members that actually uh, the department is taking this issue uh, with the seriousness that it needs and deserves to be taken. With. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Ms. Katrina Ruan. Corlia, August Gaun Buikus de Makolaki Chris Hazard and Jis Borak Shave Aging in you Sachach. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome uh, this debate. And I'd like to thank my colleague Chris Hazard uh, for bringing this uh, motion to the House, this adjournment debate to the House. And I have to say, I agree with John. Southdown is a very beautiful area. Where I do disagree with him is he thinks it's in the United Kingdom. I think it's in Ireland. Um, but we won't fall out over that. Um, for me, uh, I want to. What? <laughs> Maybe we're both right, John. <laughs> Um, but notwithstanding that, wherever you consider it is, it is an area of outstanding natural beauty and our beaches are a major part of that. And also our beaches, it's, I mean, I don't look at it just in terms of South Down, also Loud, Carlingford Lock and the building of that tourism in both those counties because both are part of the same side of the, the same coin but different sides. Um, we want to see EU bathing status. We want to see NI Water, Environment and the various agencies working together. And while some work has been done, uh, not enough has been done, because it simply isn't good enough that sewage is pouring out into the sea. Um, and NI Water have a job to do. And I look forward to hearing from the ex-minister um, about the work that maybe his department in the past should have done or could have done and the, the, where improvements can be made. We want a place where we have safe bathing environment for ourselves, 
on our children. It doesn't make sense that the North Down Gold Coast beaches have the highest level of protection from NI water and South Down some of the least protection. And I do welcome Newry Morning Down Council's cross-party motion that the Council uh, help in having our beaches nominated EU bathing waters. Um, our six, six of the beaches, Coney Island, Ballyhorn and Kalak, Khalif, took part in the big swim and paddle in August to highlight their campaigns. I and mean, we just need to look at how Ballyhornan has been treated by the authorities in the past. They've been treated disgracefully by the Minister, Ministry of uh, Defence, the British Ministry of Defence, and just the way housing and former military uh, housing was just sold off willy-nilly without any um, protection. I mean, that, that just shows uh, how they thought of the people of South Down. We just need to look at what happened in terms of selfie or wind scale, as they call it, change the name if there's an accident, and what happened the waters of South Down and Louth, and again, the disdain that the local people have been um, treated with. But those villages that I mentioned earlier, Caliph, Coney Island, Kilock, uh, Ballyhornan, they've now gained funding through the Strangford Lock and Lacal uh, Partnership to pursue applications for the Green Coast Award and for EU bathing status. In Carlingford recently, in Carlingford Lock, we have a, a Love Your Lock campaign that's been ongoing for months with cleanups in Cologne, Rostrever, Warren Point, Omid, Carlingford. Uh, I know I've been on some of those cleanups on both sides of the lock in um, Greenore, in Omid, in uh, various beaches, Templetown, various beaches, and also uh, the northern side of the lock. And this is people power. And like John, I was amazed at what we picked up uh, on the beach. The amount of, of rubbish, the amount, I felt like a beachcomber in terms, you didn't know what you were going to find. Um, myself and Sinead, one of our councillors, Sinead Dennis, have met with Love Your Lock on a number of occasions to discuss their work and what can be done to help our coastlines. Um, as my colleague Chris Hazard has said, Sinn Féin brought a motion to council this month in relation to a task force to tackle the recent report on state of the coastline. Um, love your lock. I saw um, they're, they're documenting every single piece of waste that they are picking up uh, in the um, coast uh, on the beaches. And they found industrial waste, they found netting that's dangerous to animals, they found lobster pots, they've found corrosive material. And we need to take improving our beaches very seriously because it'll benefit tourism across South Down and North Louth. And investing in our beaches is good for people, it's good for environment, it's good for tourism, it's good for um, welfare of animals. And I share, uh, like everyone in this house, I, I do share the disappointment that the Minister isn't here today. I think it is disappointing. Um, I look forward to hearing um, what he is going to do in relation to this debate. We had been informed that he would be available and now, unfortunately, he isn't. I think he owes us a, an explanation as to why he's not in the House because um, I'm sure he has a very good reason, but I think it would be good to share it with us because he is the Minister for Environment and he has a job of work to do in relation to our beaches. Thank you. And I call Mr Danny Kennedy. Mr Speaker, thank you very much indeed. Um, and uh, This is an important debate, and, and whilst I'm not a, 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 an area representative for South Down, uh, I, do, um, have, uh, I do spend quite a lot of leisure time and uh, holiday time um, in uh, the South Down coastal area, including some of the, the, the very beautiful beaches there. Um, and it's undeniable, therefore, that, that the beaches of South Down don't just belong to the people of South Down, they belong uh, to all of us. And uh, the value of these magnificent areas of natural beauty, I think, is a, a vital uh, resource, not only for the people who live in the immediate area, uh, but all of the people uh, of Northern Ireland and the tourism uh, generally. Um, the, the beaches from, from Warren Point to Ballyhornan um, offer a, a space of relaxation and enjoyment uh, for everyone, and thankfully uh, all free of charge. Um, I was gravely uh, concerned then to read the worrying levels of litter uh, on, on those and other beaches in the Marine Litter Survey published by Keep Northern Ireland uh, Beautiful. And it is both worrying and concerning 
that places such as Ballyhornan have been allowed to fall into a state where they are in now. Um, it's unbelievable uh, that more than 20,000 items of litter uh, were found per square kilometre in that area, and the beach at Torella having over 9,000 items per square kilometre is, is, is equally uh, concerning. Uh, I'm pleased to read that much better figures for all our beaches, including Rostrever. Um, but even then, over 2,000 items uh, per square kilometre is hardly uh, a record to be overly proud of. Previous speakers have uh, referred to the contribution that is uh, expected from um, NI Water. Uh, and there was a suggestion that I should uh, uh, speak on behalf of NI Water, which I'm, I'm, I'm no longer qualified to do, but I have some insight to say that uh, more, uh, uh, the, the, there are great infrastructure needs across uh, uh, the water uh, uh, industry throughout Northern Ireland, not least uh, in coastal areas. But that needs proper funding. And my experience, particularly of recent years, has been that that funding has been denied and not provided by this executive uh, and indeed by this assembly. And uh, so there are questions for all of the political parties when they begin to uh, apportion blame uh, in terms of the lack of, 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 of monies being spent. So the, the importance of the issue shouldn't be underestimated. Um, the litter and the uh, damage to the environment uh, is uh, very serious. Tourism is discouraged, um, as a dirty beach is unlikely uh, to bring people even, even from close by, never mind uh, from other places, including other parts of the United Kingdom or the Republic of Ireland and beyond. Therefore, um, it's depriving the local economy of its fair share of revenue uh, from that source. Um, equally importantly, uh, the waste is damaging Northern Ireland's sea life. Plastic bags, bottles and other waste uh, cause the deaths of fish and seabirds and other animal life uh, that is vital to the environmental health of Northern Ireland generally. And we, we should not stand idly by and watch our, our, our bountiful sea life be degraded uh, in such a manner. So South Down's beaches are important and historical. Therefore, action must be taken to ensure that they're not, uh, that they're not allowed to degenerate further. I do want to uh, take uh, a moment to com commend the hard-working volunteers seeking to improve uh, the situation. Uh, for instance, the Ardlass Festival Association, the Kilbrony Residents Association, uh, McDonald's Down Patrick and St Patrick's Primary School. Torella uh, among them have done excellent work in removing tons of rubbish that have been allowed to accumulate uh, on those be uh, beaches. And it's, it is impressive. For example, that in places such as Rostrever, uh, volunteers have given more than 140 hours and collected over 100 bags of litter. And the excellent work of school children, uh, in particular, is uh, an inspiration. It clearly shows a commitment from local people and children to not simply allow their beaches, their local beaches, to be polluted. So more support and guidance should be given uh, to groups such as this. Uh, and I want to commend their actions uh, wholeheartedly. Um, however, we, we shouldn't have to rely on the goodwill of volunteers to keep our beaches clean. It's vital that cooperation is fostered between all of the relevant organisations and the agencies. The quickest way, I think, to address this issue <clears throat> is by bringing together uh, uh, all of the relevant stakeholders and ensuring that all effort and every effort is focused on cleaning beaches. I therefore encourage <coughs> the Northern Ireland Enver Environmental Agency, Newry Morn and Down Council and other agencies and volunteers to work together. And by working as one team uh, with the goodwill and shared goal of keeping South Down's beaches clean and inviting, I am certain that the, that the situation can be improved. Therefore, uh, Mr Speaker, I hope that all relevant bodies uh, make efforts to reach out to each other and leverage the wide range of skills and capabilities that they can collectively offer. I am sure I am not alone in offering uh, my best wishes for that endeavour and, of course, happy to uh, help uh, in any reasonable uh, manner. I want to bring my remarks to a close by saying 
that I am immensely proud uh, of our beaches in Northern Ireland. I believe them still to be world class and I believe that people travel from uh, around the world uh, to experience them. Our coasts are a vital legacy that we must hold dear and I hope that the South Down coastline is kept free of rubbish and remains a beautiful shared resource for everyone. Thank you. Very sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, I'm very sorry to have, uh, to have confused you earlier, but I can assure you the committee is very conscious of the need, of the importance of keeping our environment clean and healthy for all of us to enjoy. Uh, although I'm not a South Down MOA, I have spent many happy years with my young family uh, in a rented cottage uh, near Silent Valley for many years and we certainly loved the mountains and the beaches in South Down. Um, marine certainly littering currently poses a growing threat to the marine and coastal environment because most marine litter takes such a long time to degrade if it degrades at all. Constant littering results in a gradual build up in the marine and coastal environment. There are a number of studies which clearly indicate that the situation with regard to marine littering is getting worse. Having read the 2014 marine survey, I can understand why Mr. Hassett has brought this debate to the House, and I want to thank him for doing that. The survey shows that some beaches in particular are heavily burdened with litter. Of the 14 litter types shown, which includes materials like plastic and glass, Ballyhonan had the highest levels of seven of them during 2014. A few miles south, and there are also some very concerning results from Art Glass. If you continue even further south, the Torela Beach, my children's favorite beach for many years, until they had sick of following the parents to beaches <laughs> when they got to their early teens and they just refused to come with us. So um, as, as we go down south to Torella Beach, you will find areas of it in the top three most littered beaches for 10 of the litter types. The report mentions that the stretch of Torella Beach surveyed was several hundred meters from the designated swimming area this shows the significant resources that are needed to maintain its blue flag status. The survey, which was highlighted during question time last week, makes reference to the continual pumping of raw sewage into the sea at Ballyhannon. And uh, as, as Mr. Kennedy has mentioned about NI Water, uh, the Environment Committee is quite aware of the number of incidents of NI water polluting our river. And we are certainly looking into this currently uh, in the committee. Uh, this is clearly an issue for the Council, DOE and the Department of Regional Development. And I would be asking what plans they have for a joined up, coordinated approach to uh, safeguard our uh, beaches uh, and our, our water. Uh, it, is, uh, it is certainly something that needs to be looked at urgently. Um, like others, I would like to pay tribute to the many, many volunteers who really come out tirelessly to lift litter from our beaches, the school children and families coming out to do all that with bags and bags of litter. And the shame on those people who leave litter on our beautiful beaches. And in, uh, last week, I presented an award uh, from the NGO Keep a Northern Ireland Beautiful to the Mew Strand Integrated Primary School in Coleraine. Now, I confess it's not self done, but it's one in Coleraine, a school uh, for their dedication in removing litter from their beaches. Every Friday, these pupils go to the beach to pick up litter, come rain or shine. Apparently, they put on their mat if it's wet and they still go out. And a really wonderful example, I think, for all of us 
to, to learn from. Mr. Speaker, uh, one of Northern Ireland's greatest assets is our environment, and we need to protect it. The increase in marine litter is yet another example of why we really do need an independent environment, environment protection agency. Thank you. Thank you, and, and thank all the other uh, contributors. It was a very interesting discussion. The other uh, question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. Thank you very much.